You know, when I was a young preacher, talking about money made me nervous. When I was in my mid-20s, and you know what I've learned? If, and, and we're not in that kind of series on, in our messages, but if I don't teach you what the Bible says about money, I'm cheating you. Literally, as a Christian. And so, not going to teach about that today, but that's a fact. Hey, get your cell phone out, if you would. Just get your cell phone in front of you. You're welcome. Uh, right now, I'm looking at myself on stage, talking, our Facebook Live uh, broadcast. You can get on there and watch that as well. But I want you to get your texting app open. Touch your texting screen. I'm going to invite you to text a friend and invite them to church next Sunday. And I've got the text up on the screen. Something like this. I want you to pick a friend, a family member, and just simply say this. Next, Easter is next week, next Sunday, whatever you want to do. Do you guys have plans? I'd love for you to come to church and lunch with us if you, if, if you don't. If you don't have plans. Reword it. Do it however you want to do it. But how many of you did this with me last week? How many of you got a response? Oh, look at this. Come on, somebody. I'm not going to ask you what your response was. <laughs> I got a response on mine last week. Connie got a response on hers last week. But if you'll, and, and I know the guys back there on the media team, they, it's been on the screen. It's in your bulletin. Um, statistics say that 82% of the people would come to church if a friend invited them. Only 2% of Christians bother to invite them. So we're doing all we can. We've, got, we've given you an invitation. We're showing you what to text. And uh, just send that to, you know, you're, I'm asking you to do one person. Maybe you uh, want to send that out to several during the week. You think of somebody else. And um, just send somebody. Yeah. You've got permission to text in church. Not that you need my permission. Some of you do it all the time anyway. <laughs> Back in the mid-1990s when cell phones were just getting really, the smartphone was just really getting, just getting started. And teenagers would come to church and have their cell phone. Man, I'd just call them out. I'd just bust their chops, man. Put that cell phone up. Give me that cell phone. Now, I can't do that because I'm pretty sure that most of you don't bring your Bible like this, but you have your Bible on your cell phone. And, you know... Uh, like if you're like Hope down here on the front row, she's taking notes uh, every Sunday on my sermons through her cell phone app. And so, you know, as much as I sometimes I look, look and I wonder, I wonder if people are even listening to me because they got their head down and they got. And I, and you, you're not even hiding it, man. You got your cell phone. I can see your thumbs going, and I'm going, what in the heck are they doing? I just have to trust Jesus. Would y'all stand up on your feet with me? I want to honor God, honor his word today. I feel so bad for my wife this morning. For 15 years, she has tried to get me to get a donkey. She has told me she wanted to have a donkey in church. And I told her no up until this year. And I don't even know why I told her no, thinking about it. I was actually pretty excited that the donkey was going to come in and go around the room. And I just feel so bad, her dream. I'm sure she'll have a funnier slant on it than me. But uh, she's talked about this for years. As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethpage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead, go into the village over there, so I can just see Jesus pointing, go into that village right there. Now, he was on his way to Jerusalem. He wasn't going in that village, so he's going to a different village to get his donkey. Are you seeing that with me? And he said, as soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with its colt beside it. Man, Jesus sees everything. Doesn't he? He knew that was going to be true. Untie them and bring them to me. 
if. So he's not asking for permission. If anyone asks what you're doing, just say, the Lord needs them. And he will immediately let you take them. And this took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, this prophecy from Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9, said, tell the people of Israel, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. I mean, you know, the king wasn't a political figure, right? The two disciples did as Jesus commanded, and they brought the donkey and the colt to him and threw their garments over the colt, and he sat on it. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. That's what we were trying to do in here this morning, in case you were wondering. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar. As he entered, who is this, they asked. And the crowds replied, it is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that it can be fresh, it can be meaningful. Hebrews 4 tells us that it's the word of God that is sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces our hearts, the thoughts and the intents of our heart. It convicts us. It's sweeter than honey, Lord, is what your word can be to us. I pray that you help me communicate today about being available, being an agent that is available to be used by the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, open up our hearts, open up our minds, help us to see things from a different perspective than we have ever seen them. Help us see how we can make a difference in our world by being salt and light that is available. And I ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. If you want to, you could go back to go to Generations Church of Lubbock on YouTube and see the last two Sunday services where I spoke about the subject of being the brand. Everybody say, be the brand. Branding is a big deal in our culture today. It's really pushed when it comes to social media. It's when it comes to advertising. Our football coach out here, I've noticed ever since I've been talking about it, it's a hashtag with Texas Tech. It's gone beyond hashtag Reckham to be the brand. There's a hashtag, be the brand. Well, how many of you know Jesus was about being the brand long before Joey McGuire showed up in Lubbock, Texas? Amen. He has told us, and that was our text, to be the salt of the earth. And if we lose our saltiness, we become worthless. But be salt, be light, be the brand. Be the one that attracts Jesus to other people. In other words, and I kept trying to teach you over and over and over the last couple of weeks, being comes before doing. You know, if we, if we want to do something for the Lord, we've got to be what God called us to be. We've got to be a Christ follower. We've got to be the person that, that Jesus said should be salt and light. We ought to be salty. We ought to be light. We ought to be, you know, drawing people. And you know that, that text said, be salt and light so that the world could see your good works. Come on, now that drives some people crazy. Well, I don't want anybody to see me living right. I don't want to see any, anybody see me do that good thing. Well, listen, it says in the text in verse 16, when it says, be the light of the world and do those things that... Uh, let the world know that you're doing things that glorify God the Father. All you've got to do to let people know is check your heart, check your motives. Make sure you're doing it for the right motive, and then you don't have a problem. If it's about you, there's a problem. If it's about him, great. Go ahead and do it and let everybody know about it. Amen? Amen? So it's really, really important. But if we're going to be the brand, we've got to go back before we become the brand. We've got to be available. Everybody say available. Availability is a lot, is mostly, you're going to see these words on the screen. Availability is all about position and posture. Where have you positioned yourself and what is your posture like? That, come on, in real life, if you want to walk up to somebody and talk to them, their position and their posture 
tells you whether they're available. How many of you, I mean, you don't have to say a name or turn out a situation. I just want you to think back in your mind where you were going to approach someone and talk to them, ask them a question, and you started to approach them and you turned around and walked away because you realized their position and their posture, they were not available. How many of you have done that? Wave at me. Yeah. Availability is, you can tell it from, I mean, from the word go, it, are they approachable? Are they available? Are they open to me talking to them? So availability really does boil down to between you and God. You know, worship this morning, some of you were totally available to feel God's presence. Literally feel the, the, the presence of God in this room. And some of you were not available because you were thinking about where you're going to go to lunch after that preacher gets through preaching. Don't raise your hand. Is it okay if I'm honest? See, availability depends on you, not him. Because he's always available. He's always on ready. He's always on alert. Now, I want to point, I mean, we didn't get to see the donkey. I, I, they're going to be, I'm sure the donkey's out there, their pet name, because that, that was the thing. This donkey was friendly. It just wasn't used to noises. So listen, I, I think I made a slide for this. The donkey carries Jesus into the city. I, I typed these facts out for you. I want you to recognize out of this text, the donkey carries Jesus into the city, but the donkey could have never done the task without the availability of its owners. Hello? The donkey was just the vehicle. And look at the next statement. The gift carries Jesus to the needy, but the gift never gets activated without the yes of the owner. We've got a, I'm just going to say this, this is what I think. We have got a super talented worship team. How many of you enjoyed worship today? I loved it. It was wonderful. I came in here early because we're going to baptize some folks. I got in here, uh, uh, you know, a little bit after 7, and I was checking the baptismal. Dewey was uh, already here. I saw his pickup truck out there. And when I walked in the door back over there, I used that north door. Dewey, I peeked around the corner, and Dewey was jamming. Yeah, it was loud, and he was just jamming. Well, I just peeked around the corner and waved just to let him know I was here. He couldn't have heard me anyway because the guitar was so loud. But, dude, that guy is gifted. He's just the donkey. In my illustration, he's just the donkey carrying the gift to you, the church. Am I making sense? And God, he, he's just available. Yeah, he's practiced. I don't know how. I, I don't know how many years he's played the guitar. I don't know how many lessons he's had. I don't know how much he practices. All I know is when he shows up on Sunday, he's gifted. Amen. And he brings the gift into the room, the presence of God. Amen. He brings it to you, the church. And you know what the amazing thing? He brings it to all of our friends that are online with us today too. I mean, there's, there's, I don't know how many people are watching us online today. We never know. But you know what? He, he's a carrier. And you know the Bible, you're going to see a slide on the screen. Available leaders in the Bible. This is a Bible study if you want to do it. I mean, in some form or fashion, all of these people, and this is just a really short list of available people in the Bible, but all of these people in some form or fashion said these words, here am I, here I am. Isaiah, in Isaiah 6, 8, he said, here I am, a man of unclean lips, send me, Lord. You remember that text, right? In, in uh, Abraham, in Genesis 22, God told him to take his only son, the promised son, Isaac. Most Bible scholars believe that at the time that God told him to take Isaac, 
up on the mountain and sacrifice him. Isaac was somewhere between 18 and 22 years old. He was a teenager carrying the wood that was going to burn the sacrifice. And he wasn't some little, he wasn't 10 years old going, yeah, dad, let's go, let's go up on the mountain. He was 18 to 22 years old. He was figuring out, he knew what was going on. What you, you can go read that story in Genesis 22, verse 1, verse 7, and verse 11. In some form or fashion, Abraham said, here I am, Lord. God spoke and he said, here I am. I'm available. I'm open. I'm obedient. In Exodus chapter 3 and verse 4, Moses, getting all of the crazy stuff that Moses did. He, was, he murdered an Egyptian. The Israelites were afraid he was going to murder them. He was afraid he was going to get caught. He goes to the backside of the desert. He, he, it gets time for him to be a leader. And God shows up in a burning bush. And Moses says, here I am. Amen. When's the last time you said, here am I? Here I am, Lord. Use me. You can give mental assent to the fact that you want to be salt, you want to be light, you want to be a difference maker in your family, you want to be a, you want to, you want to be a leader in your marriage, you want to be a father to your kids, you want to be a, a, a difference maker on the job. But when's the last time you say, yes, I want to be the bread. But when's the last time you said, Lord, here am I. I didn't even put Elijah and Elisha up there. Those guys have amazing stories. Availability, the concept, number one. Here it is defined by Webster's New Collegiate Third Edition Dictionary. Availability is a noun. It's the fact or quality of being close at hand and ready for use. How many, of you, how many of you know, let me just give you an illustration of availability and ready for use. The city of Lubbock comes in and inspects this building every year to see if we've got fire extinguishers that are available and ready for use. How many of you know, if our fire extinguishers aren't available and ready for use, we've got problems. You don't know you have a problem until you need them. And they've got to be inspected. About a year ago, Todd, one of our ushers back here, came to me and he said, I'm going to, take, I'm going to go get all of the fire extinguishers and I'm going to take them down to, did you go to AAA? I'm going to take them down to AAA and we're going to get them inspected and charged and ready to go. We've never had to need one, but we've got, what would you have, six? We have six in this building at various places. How many of you know when you need a fire extinguisher, it needs to be available and ready? Right? Available means the fact or quality of being readily obtainable. You need to be able to get it, put your hands on it, and use it. Freedom or willingness to do something. I think that's what the Bible's talking about when it talks about available. You know what? We have most Christ followers like you and me. Most of us, when we hear a message like this, most of us get hung up on ability. Now, I cannot play the guitar like Dewey. Never have even tried. I will confess, when I was young in the ministry, that I used to sit down at the piano because I read Jimmy Swagger's autobiography, and I read how that God taught him to play the piano. And I used to sit down at the piano in the first church I worked at and say, oh, God, pour out your spirit on me. <laughs> Never happened. I did it, though. God is my witness. I did it. See, we get hung up on ability. And we say, if I'm not good enough, smart enough, God can't use me. God did use a donkey in the Old Testament that spoke. And God did use a donkey in the New Testament that Jesus wrote in. And the donkey is just the V. Listen, if you can get past the ability issue and just realize you're a vehicle to bring Jesus to the world. And it doesn't have to come in the form of a sermon. It can come in the act, in a, in a random act of kindness. It can come in a financial gift. It can come in a talent like Dewey's and our whole worship team. 
There's so many different ways that God wants to use us, but are you close at hand? Are you ready for use? Are you willing? Listen, the owner, I'm telling you what, the owner of that donkey in the story we read had to be ready to immediately say yes. That's what availability is. Are you getting the picture? I want you to look at the next slide. It talks about the stages of availability. And we have all three stages in this room right now. Some of you are not available. You're closed. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to stand up. It's none of my business. But I guarantee you, whether you're online or whether you're in this room, there are a few of you that are eh, not available. Doesn't mean you're not saved. Doesn't mean you're not going to heaven. It's just like, Lord, I don't want you to use me. It could be guilt. It could be shame. It could be fear. It could be, there's so many different things that it could be, but you're just not available. Then there's those that you just have no recognition that you're needed. Well, I've got news for you. You're all needed and you're all gifted. And you're all, you're, let me tell you what, if it's as simple as a smile, you're needed. If it's, listen, we could use some fresh, new, smiling faces at the front door every Sunday that are just willing to shake people's hand and say, so glad you came to church. That would be really cool. It'd even be better. We've got some signs. It's getting warm. You could go out and hold out in the front lawn, on the front lawn while people are coming in. Welcome! You wouldn't even have to say anything. Just hold up a sign. We've got about six signs that say different things. And if you want to do that, just come talk to me. Go talk to Todd. Stand up, Todd. Wave. All right. You say, man, I would just feel so foolish. Well, we're not going to ask you to wear a clown suit or anything. Maybe you would prefer it. They couldn't see your face. I don't know. But just the requirement is just be friendly. You're needed. The children's ministry is, we we need, I tell you what we need in children's ministry, we need some men. Isn't that right, Ish? Ish serves. Ish serves back there in Gen Kids. But him and Bruce, I don't know where Bruce went to. He's back there serving today. But we'd love to have some men. How many of you know we got a fatherless group of, of young people in this world today? They need to see men serving Jesus and excited about it. And then the other stage of availability is whatever you want, Jesus. Whatever I've got. You can use my time, my energy, my talent, my money. And it, remember, it's not equal giving. It's equal sacrifice in every area. The next thing that happens is when we say yes to the Lord is there's an anointing. Now, I don't want you to freak out when you write that word on your notes on the back of the bulletin. People, sometimes we, we've seen preachers on TV and in other places, and they talk about the anointing, and it's like, oh, that's weird. You know, and I'm just going to be blunt. You've seen people abuse things like that and, you know, they blow on people. They push them over or things like that. And, and you think, well, that, that, that's not, I mean, that could be the anointing. Okay, I'm not going to say it's not. But I, the anointing is actually really, really, really practical. Okay, show this next slide up here, guys. And let me, let me show you my definition of anointing. I wrote that. I didn't read it in a book. I believe the anointing is a divine enablement. It's divine. It comes from God. It's a divine enablement to be and do what God has planned, and he puts his supernatural on your natural. You just say, I'm available, and God does his supernatural ability on you. You just say, yes, Lord, you can use me. And and God knows none of us are perfect, right? Right? I mean, I know without Jesus what I'm capable of. I'm a scoundrel. I'm a sinner. I need Jesus to sanctify me. I need his grace. I need his mercy on my life to follow him all the days of my life. That song we sang today, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. What a blessed Savior. 
Man, I need Jesus' touch on my life. How about you? Come on, wave at me if you need his touch on your life. But you see, when he touches your life and you come to Christ, then he wants you to be the donkey. He wants you to be the vehicle that takes Jesus to a needy world. Takes your gift, your talent, your grace, your testimony. Here's what's the greatest, the greatest gift you have in your hands is your personal testimony. Because nobody, nobody can say that's a lie. You lived it. You experienced it. Jesus saved you from your addiction. Jesus saved you from your mess. Jesus saved you from your trauma. Jesus saved you from your drama. Jesus made a difference in your life. And nobody can take that away from you. That's the gift. That's the, I'm going to say that, that's the best gift you've got to offer is your testimony of what Jesus did for you. And your testimony, listen, come on, listen to me, church. This is so important. Your testimony can be anointed. You can be just as anointed sharing your testimony in two or three minutes in a break room at your job as as you perceive I get on Sunday morning. Sometimes I'm not real anointed on Sunday morning, to be honest with you. I get in my car and leave on Sundays and go, oh, man, I shouldn't have said that. Not your head at me if I'm if you're understanding. God wants to anoint you. Look at these verses. Jesus said in Acts 10, chapter, or um, Luke said this about Jesus. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. What's the key to that verse? God was with him. God's with you too. And when when we get to the end of this message, you're going to see that. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21, I love this verse. I put it up on the screen for you in the New Living Translation because the way it says it, it says, it is God who enables us. It is God who enables us. The New King James says anointed. It is God who anointed us. But the New Living puts it down. The vernacular is is that it's God who enables you to be the brand. It is God who enables you to be salt. God who enables you to be light. It is God who enables you when you say, yes, Lord, I'll be the donkey. I'll take Jesus wherever he needs to go. In whatever nook or cranny of society that he needs to get into. The third thing about availability that I want you to notice, there needs to be a defined availability, anointing is needed, and there needs to be an abandon. Abandon. I, we could have used the word abandonment, might have, but I chose abandon. You need to, Romans 12, 1 says this, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Everybody say reasonable. Reasonable. To become a living sacrifice is not extreme. It's not odd. It's not weird. It's not strange. The scripture tells us that to present your life every day, get up every day and say, Lord, use me, it's totally, completely reasonable. It's not unorthodox. It's not strange. It doesn't make you a weirdo. It makes you someone that is available. Just just, just stop taking notes for a second and online, just look at me. Right in the room, look. What if you got up every day and just prayed something simple like this? You said, Lord, I'm available today. I present my mind, my body, my emotions. I'm a living sacrifice. Would you? It's reasonable. I'll do whatever you need me to do today. What if, you just, what, what if for the next seven days, every person in this room just got up and prayed something like that? You, you know what? You'd come to church next Sunday with so many testimonies of how God used you. The note you wrote, the card you gave, the phone call you made, the, the checker that you prayed for, the individual that you just, it, you, you just gave them joy. You just passed some joy on to somebody. Giving Jesus away, 
available. I, I've always translated this verse where it says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. I think God is asking us all to be living, living, breathing, walking dead people. I know that's an oxymoron, but living, breathing, walking dead people. We're dead to our flesh and alive unto God. Amen? Amen? And say, Lord, use me. Use me. Do with me. Let me be the donkey in the room. Matthew chapter 4, one day Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee and he saw two brothers, Simon also called Peter and Andrew, throwing a net into the water for they fished for a living. (coughs) Jesus called out to them, come follow me. You can write this down if you're taking notes. The phrase, come follow me in some form or another. (coughs) In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John appear 77 times. Come, follow me. Look what it says. They left their nets at once. They didn't hesitate. And they followed him. They abandoned their business. They abandoned their family. They abandoned their father, who was probably the leader of their business. Said, we're going to follow Jesus. You say, man, that's a negative connotation. Well, is it? Man, when you follow Jesus, my friend, you never trade for less. When you give up your fishing business, when you give up whatever you're doing, and, and God, I don't think God's asking any of you to quit your job today and, and go into the ministry. It could be. I would love for Jesus to call a bunch of young people into the ministry over the next 10 years. It's been a prayer of mine that God would use Pastor Jeff and Pastor Hope to, uh, to raise up young people that want to be called into the ministry. But you know what? They did it. Living, breathing sacrifices. Living, breathing, walking dead people. (laughs) Makes me think of that movie, I See Dead People. (laughs) I See Dead People. (laughs) Alive to God! But your flesh is... We're going to baptize a couple of people today. And I was meeting them with them in the green room before service. And I said, water baptism doesn't save you. You gave your life to Jesus at some other point, and we talked about that. But what what water baptism does is you're saying to your old nature, your sin nature, you're going to bury your flesh. You're going to bury your old, your past. You're going to bury those desires, and you're going to put them in a watery grave. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 6 and verse 4 that you're raised to newness of life. And that's what this is all about. I, re- I remember my water baptism experience very, very, very clearly. Because the pastor that did my water made it so clear to me, your old natu- your old sin nature, the things you used to want to do, it doesn't mean it's going to go away. It just means when it tries to rear its ugly head, you go, uh-uh, I buried you. Amen. That's what that experience means. We'll be baptizing people again the first Sunday of May, if you want, if you feel like you need to follow the Lord in obedience to water baptism. So get a bet. So we have available, anointed, and people that are abandoned. And the last point is authority. And this is where I told you that you would understand that he's with you. Look with me at Matthew 28, what we commonly call the Great Commission. Jesus came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority. Everybody say authority. I've been given all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We're going to do that today. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this. Be sure of this. Be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. 
when you become abandoned and say, Lord, I want to be anointed and I want to be available and I want, I want to be the vehicle, I want to be the donkey that carries Jesus, Jesus to a, a needy world, I want to be available. Here's the thing that every one of us in this room can be guaranteed of. You're not doing it by yourself. He's with you. When you feel like you're supposed to speak up, when you feel like you're supposed to ask someone if I could pray for you. So, so here's, here's, the, here's the scene. Here's the scene. You you're go out to eat at a restaurant, and you're getting served your food, and they observe you praying over your meal or whatever, and all of a sudden, this nice little uh, a waitress, this lady that's serving you, she's just pouring her whole story out to you. She's telling you she's lost her dog, she's lost her scholarship, her boyfriend broke up with her, her mom's got cancer, and she's just telling you her sad story. Is she just telling you that because you look like you'd be a good listener, or is God creating an opportunity that she has just told you her story because God has positioned you? Remember, availability is position and posture that you have positioned yourself and postured yourself in such a way that you're available and you listen to her story and go, oh, I'm so sorry. And you give her a dollar tip and leave. Christians are the worst tippers on the planet. Every person I know that works in a restaurant says they hate Sundays. They hate them because Christians don't tip. You can file that away wherever you want to. <clears throat> that was not in my sermon notes. But it is a black eye on the body of Christ that people feel that way. I can tell you that right now. That girl telling you her story is an opportunity for you to be the donkey in the room, to be available. I've developed a little habit. I won't say I do it every time, everywhere, all the time, but I do it a lot. When we go out to eat, I'll say to the person waiting on us, I'll say, we're about to pray over our meal. Is there anything we can pray for you for? And it is amazing what happens. And I say to them, well, just stand right here. We're going we're gonna to pray for that. Steve and Donna and Johnny and Pam and Connie and I were out to eat not long ago, and I did that. And the little female waiter, waitress that waited on us, she said, I have a really, really, really close friend that just died. And I'm just broken hearted. So the six of us, right there in that restaurant, prayed for her. And it made a difference in her life. Are you available? I took a look at the song list that we have planned, believe it or not, we plan things out here at Generations Church. And um, we planned for the donkey to come in, and he didn't want to. She. But anyway, um, I looked at the last song that we were going to sing at the very end of our service today and told the worship team that I felt like, y'all go, no, come on up. I felt like I, we need to sing this song as part of my sermon part of my message and so I don't know what we're, they're going to sing at the end of the service because it's totally completely out of order but you, when we start singing this song you're going to know you're going to understand why I asked them to come at this point point. and I hope during this song that you're able to sit there or stand there or whatever you choose to do I hope that you're able just to posture yourself in such a way that you would say, Lord, I'm available. Here am I. Here I am.
Maybe it's for your family. Maybe it's for a coworker that you're praying for. Maybe there's a circumstance that, that's just so hard. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's emotional things that you're going through. But just say, Lord, here I am. If you're comfortable standing up on your feet, I'd invite you to stand up on your feet as the lights go down. And I'm just going to pray over us for just a second. And then they're going to lead us in this song. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you were available. When your dad said he was going to send you back to earth, you willingly. Scripture's full of examples. Philippians 2 tells us that you came to earth as a man to suffer and die for a lost and hurting world. Lord, would you help us be your donkey that would carry Jesus into a lost and hurting world this week? As we sing this song, Lord, would you let the message of these words that we're singing go from our head down into our hearts? Teach us to obey. Teach us to obey. Let's worship the Lord together.
chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say. Come on, if he sets you free today, sing it. Sing it with all your heart. Yes, I am. Thank you, Lord. There's a place. Yes, he's got a place for you. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Nobody moving, nobody talking. Just be still before the Lord. If you're in this room and you don't know that you know that you know He's chosen you. His love is available for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever, whosoever, He does not care where you've been, what you've been doing, or who you've been doing it with. He only cares about one thing this morning, where you're going. And if you're in this room today or you're online with us and you don't know that you know that you know, if you pass from this life to the next, that you don't know that you would be with the Lord, man, we don't want you to leave this service until you know that you're a Christ follower. Romans 10, 9 and 10 tells you how easy it is to become a follower of Jesus. It tells us that all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe with your heart and you'll be saved. Then the 10th verse turns it around and says believe and confess. It says the same thing twice. And it says you'll be saved. What do I believe? I believe that Jesus died, Jesus was buried, Jesus was resurrected just for you. What do I confess? That I am a sinner and I need Jesus. There's somebody listening to me today. You've tried stuff. You've tried to put relationships, money. Maybe you've tried to put sex. Maybe you've tried to put different things into your heart, a job, a person, and you're still empty. You're still hurting. You still know that you are not fulfilled. Jesus wants to change your life in this room today. And I'm going to lead this entire congregation in a prayer. And we're all going to pray it. You know why we're all going to pray it? Because we've all been where you're at. We're going to help you pray that prayer. And then I'm going to be honest with you. Then I'm going to say, did you pray that for the first time? Are you coming back to the Lord? But we're going to help you pray out loud. You ready? Everybody in this room, everybody online, you pray this prayer with me today. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thanks for loving me that much. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm messed up. I've been in charge. And I'm messed up. I want to invite you into my life to be my Lord and to be my Savior and to do that I ask you to forgive me for all my sins come live in my heart I want you to be in charge not me you amen if you prayed that prayer for the first time in your life or if you're praying it again because you say, Pastor Ed, I, I, I've, been, I've wandered away. I'm coming home. 
And if you're online and you prayed that prayer with us, there's a link that they're providing for you. Click that link and say, I prayed with the preacher today. And we'll get some materials into your hands. But if you're in this room and you prayed that prayer for the first time, would you just lift your hand with me? Is there anybody, anybody in this room? You guys, y'all, good. Connie, do you see their hands? All right, amen. Anybody over here? All right. How many of you are willing to say, Lord, I'm available? Come on, get your hands up. Come on, look around the room, church. Get, I'm not going to ask you to put them down today. Hold them up. Look around the room. God, you see every hand that's raised up to be available. Lord, create divine moments and divine opportunities for all these hands that are raised today. They're going to go be the brand because they're available. They're going to be salt and light in Jesus' name. Amen.